Hi, this is David. Uh, this is a, a, a tensioner, timing team tensioner from 2003 Chevy Cavalier 2.2 liter Ecotec engine. And um, it, the timing chain jumped in this in this vehicle, so we've got a big job uh, in the, we're in the middle of right now. Uh, what I'm going to do meanwhile, though, is uh, make a little video. I'm going to uh, take this one apart, um, inspect it, uh, deactivate it, and reassemble it. Um, and what we're going to be using ultimately is to replace it is uh, we've got a Kloys kit, um, this newer style um, tensioner. It's going to be installed. And I'm also going to take this one apart and check it over too, just for informational purposes. Compare and contrast. Before we get going, let's look at a few differences between these two. What you'll notice right away is the newer version has a little dome on the, on the nut. This is flat on the older one. So the older one simply pulls right apart two pieces. The newer one, there's, there's a clip in here that has to be removed, which can be a frustrating job. Um, the other thing I noticed about these two was the piston size. You know, the piston size in this one is much smaller in diameter than the older one. Um, the thing that I noticed too, though, is the length, which kind of surprised me. They're not identical. Uh, the newer version is actually a millimeter or two shorter than the older one. So in the first part of the video, we're going to cover this older one here, take that one apart. If you're more interested in the uh, new version, which is what people are going to be installing mostly, you know, go to the uh, second half part of the video and you'll see uh, this one deactivated, taken apart and deactivated and examined. Okay, now take note that this piston rotates uh, free, pretty much freely, 360 degrees uh, around when you turn it. Now, if you do put pressure on it, push it in and turn it, it does catch. And, and when it catches, it does sometimes kind of lock there, which is one of the things I'm suspicious about. Um, okay, let's take this uh, tensioner apart now. First, we'll pull the piston out. Now, this body part of it here just appears to be one piece. Um, it was pressed together at the factory, but uh, there's nothing in here that I can see that can be disassembled by uh, one such as me. Uh, the other part, though, this piston, uh, does is composed of several parts. And first, what we're going to do is um, turn it clockwise with respect to the body, and then we can pull out um, the spring and the piston end piece and have a look at these. Uh, there's a little pin in here that is fits in a channel, and so when you rotate it, like I'm doing now, counterclockwise, it'll find a resting spot. A little low spot right there where my thumb is. And I'll put a little light on this. You can see I'm highlighting this little dip or resting spot for the activated position. And um, now we can pull this apart, separate the spring, you know, from the other, th this piece here. And um, there's one other, one other piece inside, you know, the outer body. There's a pin in here that the spring centers on. Um, and those are the pieces, basically four, um, that compose this piston portion. So now I'm going to point out the activated and deactivated positions on this piece. First of all, the activated, with the uh, piston out and under, pre under tension, is right here. You can see that little dip where it curves down. And now if we rotate this, quite, quite a few degrees actually, this will be over 200 degrees. Uh, you'll see where I've got the light now, the activate, the deactivated position, where the uh, where you want to put it when you install it. So inside of this, you can see the pin again, a little bit closer view of that pin and how that um, rides up and stops on either one or the other of those two uh, positions on this piece. So now we're going to uh, go and show you how to deactivate it in a vice. Okay, we're going to deactivate this now, and um, what we're going to do then is put a screwdriver, kind of jam it in this slot here, and then rotate it and turn it. Down until it reaches that stopper, that holding spot. Okay, now for a little activation demonstration. Really all that you need to do 
is simply push on it against the end of it and out it comes. See, it kind of unwinds because of the spring tension. Because when you're winding this thing up, when you're setting it to start with, your um, the spring itself is not twisting, so torque is building up on it. And that torque, when you push on it, can only release in one direction. And that's back toward the lower stop. Okay, so it's out with the old suspected bad one and in with the new one. Now when I just installed this it didn't feel like it activated. It couldn't feel anything at all. So of course I pulled it back out to check it and it is activated. See the springs loaded. So now it has to come apart. I get a snap ring plier, stick that little snap ring out of there and then we'll re-deactivate re this before we install it again. Okay with the snap ring pliers we just depress the spring, lift it up on it, and... Okay, so with our snap ring out, pull the piston out, and... Looks like we have the same kind of design on this one. There's a pin here. Now if we push it in and rotate it... Rotate this part clockwise. You can see our pieces come out, our spring. And again, what they've done here, they've got a little depression here where the pin rests. That's on the low end in the activated state. And up here, again, is the resting spot in the deactivated state. So let's line this back up with the, the channel here with the pin. Twist this back into the activated state and then to get it the rest of the way let's get the right size flat plate screwdriver in there turn it all the way down until it hits the rest deactivate it put it back in the body And the snap ring back on. Okay, now we're just going to put our snap ring on there. Just depress it while pushing. Kind of depress it while pushing downward on it when it's depressed all the way. Yeah, that's not the way. Okay, it's almost in there now. We've got the opposite end down in, so I think all we have to do is just kind of push it down in there. There. Now it's locked in place and in the deactivated position. Okay, so it's out with the old suspected bad one. And with the new one.